Today my new book comes out, The Vegetable Growers Handbook, and to celebrate it, I'm sharing 19 of my favorite vegetable gardening hacks for no dig success, which kind of emulate a bit of what this book is about. It's packed full of practical and actionable tips on every single page, as well as longer term strategies for you to have a really successful and enjoyable and productive garden. There's a link down below for you to order your copy today. To get things started, this is an amazing way to actually visualize and plan your space. If you're looking at an empty bed and you're thinking about what to plant it with, what I like to do is use a series of sticks and string to actually split up the bed into various shapes and sections to then really start being able to visualize what I could plant in the different areas. My absolute favorite hack that I learned last year was from Yen from Apple Acres DK on Instagram. And she uses this method of bringing her outdoor brassicas, for example, her purple sprouting broccoli and kale, etc., and actually transplanting them from raised beds into the polytunnel or the greenhouse after the tomatoes are out to actually get a better crop from them. And I tried it out in this small area this year and it's been absolutely phenomenal. This little bit of jungle has been one of the highlights all through winter. This is something I wish every single gardener tries at least once and that's just to leave a few leaks at the end of winter to run through the whole growing cycle to create that amazing flower. This flower is not only beautiful, you can actually eat it, you know, you can add it into salads and it's also a great way of attracting beneficial pollinators. Next is an amazing method that I've learned from Le Zorab, which is actually turning your paths into composters. So what she does is put down wood chip and then you leave it for like a year or two and then it starts turning into this beautiful compost. Then what you do is you can scoop it up and mulch your beds. You could also add to this, so you could mix in other ingredients, for example, grass clippings and used coffee grounds to actually turn your paths into another productive area of the garden. Wigwams and other vertical trellises are lovely things to have in the garden, but as you can see, they take up vital bed space, which is kind of a little bit annoying, especially for small gardens. So what I like to do actually, is to create an archway over the top between two beds, making the most of the pathway. So what that does is it opens up more space in your raised beds to grow stuff, but you're also then turning your unproductive pathway into a place to grow your climbing crops. The next tip is something I picked up from Adam, from Adam and Ar, and it's using wool packaging, this is wool packaging, as a mulch. The reason why it works so well is actually slugs don't like to go over it. So if you're getting slug problems, you can actually use this as a way to help slug proof a lot of your seedlings. And the other thing is, is it's also a fantastic ingredient to put on your compost bin. Number eight is an ode of yesterday's video, which is about eight free ingredients to bulk out your compost bin. And there's actually one that I didn't include because it's one that you usually buy. It's either municipal compost or bulk compost. Now the quality isn't always very good and usually it's quite microbially dead. However, if you mix this 50% municipal compost with 50% homemade compost and leave it in a pile for two to three months for them all to mature together, you then get this amazing kind of charged, very microbe rich compost to use on your garden and it helps extend your homemade compost also. The next tack is something that I picked up from the paddies when visiting Lawson Park, and it's about angling the soil or the compost in your beds ever so slightly towards south. So instead of being straight on with the sun coming down, if you angle it, the sun's hitting it at a better angle, which means that your bed is going to warm up that extra bit more to help your seedlings. Compost bins, they're fantastic to have in the garden, serve a great purpose, but they can take up quite a lot of space. So what you can do when you finish filling a compost bin and you're letting it settle down, is to actually plant in it. You can plant things like beans, potatoes, even squash. So last year in these compost bins, we grew quite a bumper crop of pumpkins, and it's just one way to get a little extra from your space. This is something I first saw at Charles Dowding's where he had this big bucket full of water 
always close by and always so easy to just dunk your watering can and there it is filled. So if you think carefully about where you could put some of these big containers around the garden, which are always available, if you quickly need some water to water a plant, they are there for you. Throughout the growing season, there are often gonna be these kind of awkward gaps appearing around your growing area, and you're not really sure what to do with them. For me, my go-to is to always fill them with either annual herbs or edible flowers. And the reason why is that these don't need much space, but they are incredibly productive. They also add a lot of color to the corner or the area, adding to the beauty of your garden, as well as being a great place to attract pollinators and other beneficial insects. One of my favorite things about having raised beds with edges is that the edges actually bring so many benefits. I'll probably end up doing a whole video just about utilizing the edges of raised beds. But one of the best things actually is allowing certain trailing plants to sprawl over. So things like strawberries and nasturtiums and squash, I actually allow them and encourage them to grow into the pathway because I think I love the look of the straight edges alongside the sprawling plants. And I just think it's a nice way to utilize more pathway space and also make it look more beautiful. If you have quite an exposed garden, common knowledge is to focus on creating shelters such as undercover growing spaces or tall hedges. But one of the best things to do that I learned when visiting Lynbrek Croft is to actually carefully consider varieties. There's very often dwarf varieties of a lot of different things such as broad beans and peas, which are far more suited to lower compact growing and then they can then survive the winds and it's just a really important thing to think about don't just focus on the shelters also think about varieties as a gardener we often have lots of different seed packets all over the place but there are two things that i'm using this year to help keep them organized the first is really simple it's actually a photo organizer it has lots of different compartments and it's really easy to keep a track now if you end up getting more seeds something like a jewelry organizer such as a load of boxes with little drawers something like that works so well and that's the main thing that i'm using this year to make sure that i never lose a seed packet again I have to mention the next one because it's one of my favorite things about March, April and May. And it's actually the better harvest of kale. Forget the leaves because when kale starts to flower, you get these amazing flower shoots appear and they're kind of like a poor person's purple sprouting broccoli. So let your kale grow through April and into May. And then you'll also be gifted with a stunning display of yellow flowers. It's only the start of March and for me there's still another potential 10 weeks of frost ahead. So if you have a tender plant or if there's a late frost coming, what I like to do is use some kind of material uh, like straw or it could be leaves kind of just draped over the plant like that to kind of fluff it up and then I'm trying to create a frost free protected room without having to worry about fleece. So coming from the back, making sure everything is scooped in like that, and then putting a rock over the top to secure it. That is now an ideal frost-free site. And then the next morning after uh, the frost has all cleared, you can just remove it and your plant is gonna be nice and healthy, but not pressed down. Potatoes are something we all love and it's worth growing because they taste so good homegrown but they take up a lot of space and are also quite destructive to the soil which is not always what we're aiming for when it comes to no-dig gardening. So what I do now as my new strategy is I'm basically growing 90% of my potatoes in containers most of which are a blight resistant variety Sarpo Miras which I let die down and I leave them in the containers all through winter and whenever I need some potatoes I just tip out a container and I've got potatoes ready. So that also saves a lot of storage space. This next hack has been so revolutionary I just can't afford to not share it in this video as well because it's something I learned watching James Prigioni's channel about Bill Mollison's method of helping seeds to germinate 
with a plank. And you're like, how on earth does that work? Well, what happens, especially for carrots or parsnips, is if you sow them and then they dry out, that really, really does affect germination. So by putting a plank after you've direct sown them, what you're doing is you're helping to retain all the evaporation to encourage really successful germination. Once the first seedlings start to appear, that's when you remove it and you've got a beautifully germinated row of seedlings. Now, because I love that method so much, whenever I direct sow anything, I use a plank method, whether it's beetroot or lettuce, just because it gives me the peace of mind and the guarantee of a really, really successful germination rate. I don't know about you, but my dream would be to have a walled garden. What a fantastic growing space it is. However, we can't all have a walled garden, so what we're doing here in this garden to compensate is using trellising around all of the areas to create a walled garden effect on a budget. You can even make your own trellising. It's a fantastic sun trap and you can also start considering using trellising within your garden to create little sun traps, little kind of pockets of warmth to grow more food, to have more fun, to add more diversity and structure to your space. I just think it's something that's worth thinking about to implement this year. So there are 19 hacks and tips to really help your vegetable garden become really abundant this year. And if you want loads more tips just like that, this book is out today, is absolutely full of them. And if my channel has been any help, and if you want to support it, I would absolutely, it would mean the world to me if you could grab a copy, mostly because I'd actually really love to hear your thoughts about it and how it's helped you and your gardening journey.